Every creator has a purpose, a definitive reason why their passions emerge. We live in the era of digital sharing, the age of the creator as I call it. I was growing up a skateboarder, filming in the analog age, and the option of sharing content was really non-existent. And when that breakthrough arrived, what many see as a luxury to constantly give that portal to their highlight reel, to me will always be a privilege. That this technology allows people to inspire others or mentally disrupt the true nature of our progressive minds. I've been thinking a lot about why I want to keep making videos in this time of uncertainty. And the only things that come to mind is remembering why I do it. It all comes back to stories, storytelling. The only stories that matter are my own. The memories are my own. I want to remember that it's about the process of creativity, the dedication of one's art form. I want to remember that it should start and end with being your own inspiration. And this is my story. Well, this is just my excuse to basically film a black and white video. For the longest time, I've been wanting to film a black and white video for the longest time. Why not make it one of my vlogs? Currently, this is the status of the room where I work currently. And uh, I just wanted to talk about what defines a creator to me. It's someone who has a passion, a passion to manifest their ideas. It's an artistic thought that you turn into something tangible, something that exists exists in the world and one thing that got me started as you can tell already it's been skateboarding skateboarding was that one thing that allowed me to desire progression desire that will to keep improving naturally the best way to watch myself progress was to record myself see how I can improve my skill level from beginner to wherever it is that I am at this point in my skateboarding hobby growing up wasn't the easiest to attain a actual video camera and so every time a video camera was around, I made a priority to get as many tricks down, recorded so that I could play them back and watch them back later. Especially when my cousin came around, visited the Bay Area, he introduced me to the world of skating and recording video. That was the thing that introduced me to it. When he moved down to Southern California, he met skaters in that entire lifestyle. John and his crew just filmed and skateboarded. Initially, when you're recording, you never really think about what these clips are gonna be in the long run. You tend to not have that feeling of looking back at memories just yet. At that moment, you're just thinking about the then, that now. As you get older, you tend to look back and, and cherish those memories more, seeing how much time has passed, and you can't help but think like, wow, that was just an amazing time. I had such an amazing experience that you'll never be able to get back. Memories are the motive. It's great when you capture something that you yourself could cherish and when you do it for other people they can cherish as much as their memories as you you cherish yours and I think that's the best part about being a videographer paid or not for that moment that you get paid to do something that you love that you think is amazing you're authentic about it that's probably the best feeling for me it took a while for me to accept that whole being paid for this thing and given the opportunity to you know record a wedding or record an event like a birthday and stuff like that that fast forward to when life happened there's a period of time where I didn't really record anything at all just because it was just such a it's hectic to be able to record something it stays in a videotape for so long you forget about it you go go about life it doesn't become a priority until the recent age where cell phones became prominent in being a little device to record video once that 720 P hit during that iPhone 4 era that did it for me I it brought me back like you know from 2004 about I'd say about 2000 I stopped recording things with my video camera around like 2004 ish five ish things were still recorded here and there but it wasn't like a that time when the phones came out it just sparked an entire thing like okay like I think just maybe into the 2000s maybe 2010 11 like that's when 
I really jumped back into it. So five years fast forward from 2005, I really didn't record anything and still skating at the time. Recording it was not even. Fast forward 2011, iPhone 4 came out. To be able to film the things that I was doing before and making it so easy for you to like edit on a phone and do this and that. I was learning the art of the creator already. So at the time, you know, fast forward back into 2014, I had already saw some of those converted tapes with my cousin. He converted all these tapes that we used to record when we were younger with the, the skating and something just clicked, clicked in my mind. And I, I was just completely, you know, obsessed with the fact that, oh my God, I got to continue this legacy of, of making memories. And it was a perfect time, you know, like it was a perfect time because I had just moved to SoCal. My girlfriend, now wife at the time, she, she gave me a GoPro 2014 around Christmas time. That's what did it for me. I just started recording our adventures, doing the whole lifestyle thing. Of course, I had to learn how to edit. I remember locking myself in a room and just hopping on the computer, learning iMovie, learning Movie Maker. You know, I learned some of this stuff back in school, in college when I took video journalism. But of course, that was in the, the analog era, you know, where it was a little bit hard to, to take, you know, tape and convert it and do the whole jazz, you know, and that was, that was tough. You know, it was crazy. The fact that I just got obsessed and I was just, everything I learned was through trial and error, you know, and to this day, like I still learn through trial and error. Like I, I literally just make mistakes. I shoot something and I realize I don't like it and I improve. It's always like a learning thing when it comes to this world of video and I just love it, man. It's, it's just awesome to be able to, to make something and through it all, it's the consistency is what allows me to grow this, this skill set. That's what it takes is if you really want it, you just keep doing it. You become possessed and obsessed with it that you just always want to do it. Doesn't matter what it is, you just, you just keep doing it. You know, as I continued to record things, I mean, people started to see that, you know, when it came to recording onto Instagram and when I started to put content there and not really focusing too much on the YouTube, it's just, I started small, started to figure out how to create little things. And then in the future, it became the bigger things, you know, make bigger stories, longer stories. That was it. It was, it was just that. It was the simple of a platform that allowed me to showcase what I was learning and, and how, you know, pace that I was going at. Took an account to that. My friends were like, hey, like, you, can you film my birthday party? Um, and it was just that one back in 2000, you know, 15, you know, John and Lindsay got engaged. They, they got, they wanted me to shoot something for their wedding reception video. I shot a lifestyle thing and it was, it was awesome. Like for the most part, their wedding planner took account for that. Sharon, Sharon's a big part of this journey. She, she recognized my work. She believed in me and I, from then on, I booked my first wedding and it was scary as hell, but you know, I went through it, I went for it and it was such an amazing feeling. And I think till this day, I still have a weird thing about getting paid to shoot something. You know, sometimes I, you go through that rough patch where it's like the rite of passage. And I talk about this with my friends a lot is that you reach that certain point where you start to doubt yourself. You start to doubt like you're, what you're capable of and, and, and just the next move you're gonna make as far as being a professional or semi-professional videographer, filmmaker, whatever you wanna call it, you know? And I think that at that point, I took like that long break where you have to just kinda like differentiate the, the difference between your hobbies, what it used to be for hobbies and what's fun and versus like professional work where you're actually paid to do it and you have to like cater to clients and stuff like that. That's what I got caught up in later down the line. Overall, you know, as long as you find something you love to do, just keep on doing. That's that's my story. The longevity of this videography world is, is the fact that I just like to create things. I've always wanted to make something that people could remember you by. You make an impression by who you are, the authenticity of who you are. Of course, you're inspired by others, but the biggest inspiration is yourself. I, I just want to continue to create in this time of, we're in this uncertainty time. I'm lacking some some creative juices you know I kind of run out you know I'm, I'm running out of things to do so I just kind of come up with these concepts and I just want to be able to to follow through with I think it's just the best feeling I feel accomplished feel great to journal down my life for the future and whoever watches these videos and you know whether it's my friends or you know my grandkids in the future you know future proofing everything <laughs> that's all I have Thanks for watching this video, kind of just where I'm at at this point in my life. My wedding gigs have been postponed. It's okay, you know, it's all right. You gotta find a way to stay positive about it all. You know, it's 
to me it's always gonna be fun to press that shutter button to press that record button to create something we all have to find that purpose of why we do it when you find it you just keep going that's it i guess i'll see you guys in the next one